like to welcome Susanna Haddad. Susanna, thank you for joining me on this rainy Monday. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, so Susanna is currently on display at the Doherty Art Center. Um, and our doors are currently closed to the public, but we are conducting this artist talk um, still in a little bit different than what we had originally planned. But you know what? Great opportunity to have a little bit of a, a greater reach and get this virtual artist talk out into the world. So thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having it. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Let's talk about your background, um, your education. Did you go to school? What was, what was your focus? My focus in school was digital communications. So I learned a lot about like marketing and PR and design. And then I've done, I had done freelance work since like before college of always having one or two folks that I did some graphic design work for. Um, but I'd started like my art life kind of, uh, I always take it back to high school because I went to a high school where the arts program was incredible like you could open you could need a supply and it would be there um, where was that high school st andrews here in austin um you needed a supply and you could have it you know which is i feel like pretty rare and then being out on your own later on it's a much different experience about supplies and what you need and how you get things um and so that was really kind of the start of like the more serious look outlook on could art be a career. Um, but like I said, I went to school for digital communications right after school. I moved back to Austin and started down a path of kind of always doing some sort of design, whether or not that was my job title. It was always some like some visual aspect to my work. Um, my last full-time job, I was a creative director for a company. So it was a lot of like creating content or um, building graphics and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'd always been painting probably for the last like five or seven years, but it wasn't until about probably about four years ago that I actually started showing work just in small capacities. Um, but it always was based off of like a painting and it wasn't until this exhibit where I kind of grew into like a three-dimensional space. And it's almost like you became this very well-rounded, multidisciplinary artist. I mean, it's evident in your work. You know, it's not just painting. It's, it's, uh, it's multimedia, which is great about this exhibit. Yeah, I always felt like with paint, like my paintings... I could never get big enough, like the scale. And then it turned into like, I can never get the dimension how I want it to be. And it's not like literal dimension of shading and not shading. It was just like, I, do, I just, I, get, I started doing three dimensional work with the wood and it just felt right. It was like, this is the dimension, this type of dimension that I'm looking for. Cause it's hard to do, paint very simple kind of abstract paintings and have them feel, give it the same sort of dimension as I get with the 3D cutouts. So once I started doing that, I really felt something like something click into place. Um, I also love working with my hands and I obviously do that in painting, but being able to, you know, literally jigsaw wood based off of a photograph or a painting and then, you know, put them together in different ways and adhere them was, like it makes my mind, it's like p very peaceful to my mind. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And so I know that I think maybe working with the materials itself is an influence for you, but is there anything else that influences your art practice from family, everyday life? What would that be? Yeah, both everyday life, travel and family. I grew up in a, like a multicultural household and I found like, especially when I started probably the age of like middle school, high school is when I started feeling how I like, I could kind of be more in tune with how I process things. And it, it's a process of few words, um, but a lot of like internal dialogue. <laughs> and um, I find that in my work of like, from a brief glance, it's a very simplified 
abstract view, um, and especially this collection of like specific images, but it, it's all inspired by like, I see something, how it's deconstructed in my brain, and then how it's processed and put back together. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems simple, but I mean, how long would you say that it takes you to process when you say process an image? Um, there's some, like there's some pieces from the collection where it's, I took the photograph and I was like, okay, this I know is going to turn into something, whether it be a painting or turn into three dimensional. There were definitely some where like I would print out multiple photographs and like, you know, have to look back by, look at them side by side to figure out, okay, which one is going to be deconstructed and then processed and then put back together, but also speak the best to that image, if that makes sense. Like I could have four different photographs of kind of the same subject, but only one of them in my mind would go through the deconstruction and reprocessing and get to a, like a final product that I thought, okay, this actually reflects what I was like the photograph that I was hoping it would the best if that makes sense. So, yeah so it sounds like you're guided by the aesthetics of the original photograph that's really the jumping off point for you. Yeah. Um, so you're a full-time artist. Uh, mm -hmm. What type of collaborations projects do you have going on right now? Well right now I'm doing I have a, a commission piece that I'm working on um, that was based off of the gallery show um, and then I have a very cool collaboration so I'm a visual arts instructor for um, a community organization called Freehand Arts Project where we go into the Travis County Correctional Facility and teach I teach visual arts we do creative writing and all sorts of things and since like due to the pandemic we haven't been able to go into the the jails to teach um, the director and I have uh, created a digital workbook that they can print off there um, and so it's, it's been very interesting because in the saying of like, when you teach, it makes you better because you're having to relearn everything. But being somebody who is such a, like a visual artist and creating with my hands and then trying to understand how does that work when you literally put it on paper, you know, like mm -hmm. the, when I see a work of art or when I'm making art, what are the actual questions going on in my brain and how do I ask those questions to anybody, you know, because I, I find that when I've taken a lot of art courses, there are a lot of like uh, repetitive questions that come up of that seem very straightforward of I'm looking at a piece of art. How am I digesting? But I was talking to somebody about, you know, sometimes you'll look at a piece of artwork and like, a brief color will remind you of your cousin's aunt's birthday party when you were two. And then why is it now giving you a certain feeling when you look at it, you know? And like, those are kind of questions that it's hard to like get that deep on paper. So it's been a very cool collaboration to work on and take some, take my artwork and take my experience being an artist and figure out how, <laughs> to make that, uh, you know, an interactive workbook. Yeah, so it sounds like your, your exhibit deconstructed you is, is very much like, because of it, you're able to give people an idea of how to process artwork themselves. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's not so, maybe it's not so deconstructed, but it's really looking at those those internal questions and in creating a, you know, a, a visual narrative that's um, very purposeful for a person. So let's um, talk about your concept. How and why, when did this concept of a deconstructed view really come about for you? Um, it was definitely while I was traveling. I did a lot of traveling the last two years and um, I'd be in certain places and see something and take a photo of it and be like, man, this photo doesn't do it justice. You know, like I wish I could take this experience and give it to somebody else. Or um, I wish I could convey what it is that I'm seeing and not just like a photograph or a video of the space. Um, 
or really I was in Oaxaca and I was on the walking along to the uh, botanical gardens and there was this wall that was all these different colors and I took a photograph of it and I was like man how do I convey <laughs> what I'm seeing right now because this photo isn't doing what I'm what I want it to do um and so that kind of stemmed a, a definite like a breakdown of how and why and what materials and what mediums and what could I do to, to make that vision come true? Um, so it's definitely through travel uh, that it kind of... Have stuff. you always had the travel bug? Yeah. Um, we traveled a lot as kids. And when I was in college, I studied abroad for a year, um, which was one of the best years, you know, of my life. Um, just because you get to travel so much and I was studying abroad in Spain and once you're in Europe it's so I mean easy and fairly inexpensive compared to the U.S. to be able to travel and it you got to I got to go to places that I never would have you know anticipated going or um so yeah I've always been a traveler. So with a deconstructed view, I know that you want the viewer to see what it is that you're seeing. You know, that photograph just didn't do it for you. So the, the exhibit shows this process and, you know, how it evolves in your brain. What do you want the viewer to get out of it? Like, how do you want the viewer to relate to it? Well, I think the biggest thing for me that I've always felt about art, no matter what medium I've been using, is... You know, I, I want somebody to feel or experience something. It could be utter hatred. <laughs> it could be like um, a sentimental memory that it brings up. It could be anything as long as they're experiencing something. And the way that we displayed the de a deconstructed view is, you know, the artwork is on the wall and then a very small, it's like a three by five uh, photograph of the inspirational image that... Um, that inspired the piece of work and um the whole idea is you since the uh the bodies of work are the larger image i wanted people to go in and see that and experience it and have their own idea of you know what is it you know what am i looking at how does it make me feel and then be able to see okay this is what inspired the artist but the whole idea is being able to see them side by side they get to see what my deconstructed reality looks like, theirs is entirely different. So that's, that's the question that it kind of asks in relation to the exhibit, but also when you're walking through a gallery, chances are you're standing next to somebody who's looking at a piece of the, of the same body or um, looking at the same piece, and you're standing there having this different experience of the exact same work of art, and it it kind of asks the question of like, how is my reality and how have my experiences in my past shaped what it is that I'm seeing? And how is it different than, you know, my sister standing next to me or this complete stranger standing next to me? Um, so while I want people to be able to see my inspirational image and see what it is that was deconstructed and put back together in my head, the hope is that they get to do that for themselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It, I mean, I think every person walking through your exhibit will have a different view from the person before them and the person after them. You know, and some pieces I think will hit really hard with, not hard, but you know, really hit home with some people. You know, there, there was um, a piece in your exhibit that reminded me of home, which is I grew up in California. It was nowhere close to California, but there was something about the colors that it was this copper color on top of this really deep blue that just reminded me of the sun on top of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I get it. And I think, I think people without realizing it will walk into the exhibit and, and feel that connection and, you know, and it becomes meaningful to them. They don't really know why, but that's the point. So, yeah. exactly. um, so do you know as soon as you take an image that it's going to, what it's going to transform into? Because I know you also work um, in prints as well. 
you said you also do paintings. You now do um, the construction out of wood. Mm -hmm. So do you know as soon as you take a photo what it's going to turn into? There were some pieces that I definitely took a photo and, and knew it was going to turn into something three-dimensional. Um, there were a lot of pieces where I would go back and basically I chose a, 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 I put together the collection of the photographs that I wanted to use. I had way more than the number of pieces that were in the show. And then I would do kind of rough sketch outs of like the shapes that I would see um, and how they might layer upon each other. And then it was down to, I would find color samples that um, I would pull from the photographs and then start playing around with, you know, colors laying on top of each other. And then it would go to cutting out the pieces of wood, painting and assembling. So I'd say probably half of them I knew were gonna be a three-dimensional. Um, like I said, I started out painting on canvas, um, but I never felt like I, I never felt like I could go big enough or like dimension enough dimension. And so I always felt like with these photographs from travels, there was going to be something more, even if it was, I even played around with how to do like three dimensional on canvas. Um, I didn't know at the time it was going to be like specifically birch wood and how it was going to be assembled, but I did know that it was going to play around with 3d. And so what's next after this? Are you going to continue to develop a series? I know you seem like you've got a lot of projects that go on simultaneously. So this may be hard for you to narrow down, but do you think at least, you know, the concepts will continue to be a, a theme in your work? Yeah, uh, the style for sure. Um, I think I was on like my third to last piece when I had this idea of I want to do even larger scale and I actually want to try start doing portraits. Oh, so for like people yeah. uh, <laughs> portrait. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I had this image in my head of like, yeah, I, could, I mean, yeah, I could see that. That would be very cool. Because I have, it's back oh, like 10 years ago, I took a trip to Iran with my dad where I have a lot of family. And I have this collection of photographs of a lot of the women in my family who I had, many of them I had never met. And um, yeah, so I had done photographs of that a long time ago. And then when I was finishing up this body of works, I had a, like a memory of some of the photographs of the women. And I was like, man, I always wanted to do I used to do like big portraits on kind of like recycled materials like cardboard or foam core kind of things. And so it, th even then it was playing around with three dimensional, but not in the same um, medium. And so something, yeah, something clicked in my head and I was like, I want to try big wooden three dimensional portraits. Very cool. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like that would be, um, that would be pretty successful. You know, I think, with portraits, sometimes portraits are hard because portraits are beautiful, but they're, they so closely resemble somebody else that you may not have a connection to. Mm -hmm. And I could see in your style of portrait really resembling a lot of things for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that would be a great, a really cool concept. Yeah, I was teaching, um, I was an artist mentor at a high school doing um, painting, but I find that when I sometimes when I sit down to a canvas it's like um like writer's block but for painting I don't know what you call it painter's block <laughs> and um but it's always like the canvas that gets me in that mode of like oh no once I put pit, pit, like pen or paint to canvas then it's like it's I don't know and so and I found that with a lot of students they were they were scared like fearful of starting a project and so I brought in just canvas totes because there's something about it that feels a lot more casual, feels a lot less like um, permanent, I guess. And so I found that that medium of um, simple canvas totes was a lot easier to get people started on. And I was going through like scrap material and found this like foam 
I don't even know what you call it, like thin foam. And I started playing around with like sewing very abstract, colorful portraits onto totes. I think I have one. I'll show you. But that kind of went to hand too. What if I could do something like this, super large and with wood? If you can see it. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and like that's super abstract, but then what does that look like big? And then what does it look like when it's actually inspired from a photograph of, you know, somebody that I know? Very cool. So long story short, we keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I'm going to awesome. try. You're going to need a bigger space to make it to uh, exhibit in pretty soon. So bigger space and I'm bigger walls moving yeah. my studio because <laughs> I need more space. <laughs> All right, very cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, for everyone out there, at the end of this video, you will um, see information so that you can uh, contact Susanna, see her website. Um, so thanks again, and goodbye. Thank you again, Susanna. Thank you so much. Yeah.